for anyone that wants to get into this business and be successful, any couple words for them, brother? So the biggest thing I would say is, is if you get into this business, one, you need to understand what hard work and what worth ethic, ethic is. It's so important to understand that trucking truly is a lifestyle. It's a life. And if you're going to be successful at it and be in this business, you have to live the life. It's that simple. I, in my business, I'm, I'm out 365 days a year. Everything is involved trucking. Um, it's not a nine to five job. You know, you, you live to truck, that's what you do. And I love it, like, I love the trucking industry. It's a great thing, you know, it's a great place to be. Um, it has its ups and downs like anything else, but just love what you do. You know, I'm, I'm a trucker, man. Like, I'll be doing this till the day I die. As long as I can still get in here and push the pedal, yes. you'll see me out on the road and literally, I don't care what happens in trucking, I'll always be out here doing this. This no. is what I was made to do. Brandon Carpenter. Yeah, man. So, you know, we met on the show circuit last that's year. That's right. That's right. Wildwood last year. And, you know, the first thing he told me, he lied to me. He told me that this is a work truck. <laughs> when I looked at it, it looks like a show truck to oh, me. Oh, come on. This truck works every day. You know every, that. So, Follow my Facebook. You'll know that. <laughs> so tell me this. Uh, what are the specs on this old girl? All right. So this is a 1981 A model Kenworth. It's got a 14 liter Detroit in it, backed by a 13 double overdrive. 355 rears. It's sitting on airliner suspension. Um, other than that, I mean, it's a, it's a workhorse. You know, we set it up to work. Uh, one of the goals of building this truck was it would be a truck that we could go out, run it every day. We'd get good fuel mileage, hopefully, and uh, we'd have good power. And you know, it would be a good just all-around truck to use for everyday use. And that's what we got. So let's check out the inside real quick. All right. Yep. Here we go. Widow, 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 widow. I don't do advertisement, <laughs> but this is my man right here. Yeah. All right. Tell us a little bit. All right. So. This truck's name is actually Murphy, and it earned its name because anything that could go wrong with this truck did go wrong. Matter <laughs> of fact, it says it on the inside of the visor. Um, we love this truck. I literally have done everything to this truck myself. It's all stuff that we've done. It's all literally something that I've turned every bolt. Um, the only thing I didn't do, since we're on the interior, is the interior. Uh, actually, this was done by an Amish guy in Ohio, believe it or not. He uh, is my neighbor, and he's really good at doing wow. interiors. So. He did all the work for me. I know it's kind of sacrilegious. We did diamond interior on a Kenworth, but hey, we like it, so that's what we went with. We went ahead and put the uh, sleeper ring, uh, the Peterbilt sleeper ring in the interior to open it up so that way we can slide the seats back, get some room. So got some leg room in it. It's normally the problem with an A model is there's no leg room. So we solved that issue. Like black interior, so we went with black. I love it. You know, um, don't let all the other guys get mad, but what makes a Kenworth better than everything else? I'll tell you exactly what makes a Kenworth better than everything else. I mean, just take a look at him, the styling, man. It doesn't get any better than this. Look at how sleek everything looks on an A model. And I'll be honest, I'm partial to an A model, man. You gotta have an A model. Hey! <laughs> yeah, let's go inside real quick and yeah. we'll have a quick combo, yeah, brother. Sure. Yeah, sure. I can't believe this is a work truck. <laughs> I can't believe. Oh, the wind's blowing me, the wind's blowing me. I'm gonna give it a second, I'm gonna give it a second. Happen. Yeah, it's brutal out there with the wind today. All right, so you told me what year is this again? 1981. Damn, bro. So think about it. This truck has been on the road for over 40 years. Isn't that really a milestone for this truck? Like, imagine the stories that this truck could tell. Like, I was born in 1985. Well, there you go. Yeah. So think about it. This truck has been out here running around since before you were born. I mean, how old are you, anyways? All right, so I'm 34. 34 years old and you yeah. know how to build trucks? Yeah, right, yeah. Why exactly. am I so untalented? <laughs> You're talented in many ways. You just use your talent differently than I do. We all have talents in life. Unfortunately, not all of us get the same talents, but that's what's great about it. Because if we all had the same talents, life would be boring, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, have it. I need to talk to you every morning. You're, right? like, my, you're like my coffee, brother. Yeah, right? So that's cool. So, yeah. So tell us... Um, 
how this all started for you? I mean, did you just wake up one day and say, hey, I want to be a trucker? So basically what happened was is I was a little kid, and this is always a story that always reminds me about trucking because most people who build semis or in this world or whatever, they all grew up around trucking. I'm one of the few that I didn't grow up in a trucking background. And what really kind of drew me to trucking was is, and here again, the Kenworth. So uh, there's a couple of them here. The K100 Aerodyne was like the coolest truck That's when my I was a kid. Truck. Yeah, so I can remember being a little kid and sitting out at my grandparents' house. They lived next to a highway, and I heard a Jake break coming down the hill. And this is one of my first trucking memories. And here comes this really cool K100 Aerodyne that's coming down the hill. And he's Jake in, and I'm just sitting there watching it, and it's like, man, that is so cool. Imagine the guy driving that thing. And I knew right then and there. So then I went to school, and all I did all the time, I had extra time, I was drawing pictures of cab overs. And then where I got older, I got an opportunity to go to a vocational school and learn diesel mechanics. So That's I went to how the vocational, exactly. So I went to the vocational school, and automatically, before I was even out of high school, I got a job as a mechanic at a trucking company. So I'd go to school till basically lunchtime, and then I would go to work. So my two years, my last two years of high school, I worked half a day, and well, clear into the evening, and then I'd go to school the next day, and I got to work on cool trucks. So life was great. So that kind of started the whole thing, and then as I got older, um, my dad actually he uh, lost his job during the recession after 28 years at a factory. And one day we're kind of sitting there just like everything else, you know, all dumb luck. We're sitting there talking and everybody was getting out of trucking and literally everybody's running for the door wanting to sell their rigs. And me and him just look at each other and I said, you know what? You can't find a job. You're 40 years old. You had a heart attack. You know, the recession's on. Nobody wants to hire these older guys. Let's buy trucks. And we did. And it was through dumb luck that we even made it. I mean, we just... It was like all the cards fell into place when we did it. I mean, it was unbelievable. How That's well it crazy. Out. You yeah. know, when people don't understand, I mean, besides a, a trucking company, how many trucks have you built? Well, I think, um, including the one I'm doing right now in my shop, I think me personally, as far as the ones that I truly have put together myself, I think I'm on number six or seven right now. At your so. age, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we're talking about he does everything but sell, okay? Yeah, yeah, literally. So the truck is truly built in my shop. Um, the only thing that gets outsourced now is literally just, I, I'm not a seller. Like, I'll be honest, I'm yeah. not, I don't sell. So the interior part is the only thing. I mean, I do the wood floors. We do, you know, everything from yes. whatever. And, you know, but the, the actual vinyl and the sewing part is something that I just, I don't think I'll ever do that. Yeah, no, you know, let the so. people that do it well. Yeah, do it. exactly. No, that's good. Um. Now, is that a business as well? Will you build trucks for other people, or so how I, does that work? I do do, like, for close friends and stuff. We do a little work on the side. That sounds know, like and, a no. <laughs> yeah, well, it's always been kind of in the back of my mind that I, because a lot of people always ask me to do stuff, and it's kind of something that I kind of think maybe in the future I might get into doing maybe some custom builds for right. guys. But the problem with it is, is, like, there, you know, I'm I'm a trucker, man. Like, I'll be doing this till the day I die. As long as I can still get in here and push the pedal, yes. you'll see me out on the road and literally I don't care what happens in trucking. I'll always be out here doing this. This now, is what I was made to do. I'll, I'll tell you this. So for anyone that wants to get into this business and be successful, any couple words for him, brother? So the biggest thing I would say is, is if you get into this business, one, you need to understand what hard work and what worth ethic, ethic is. It's so important to understand that trucking truly is a lifestyle. It's a life. And if you're going to be successful at it and be in this business, you have to live the life. It's that simple. I, in my business, I'm, I'm out 365 days a year. Everything is involved trucking. Um, it's not a nine to five job. You know, you, you live to truck. That's what you do. And I love it. Like, I love the trucking industry. It's a great thing. You know, it's a great place to be. Um, it has its ups and downs like anything else, but just love what you do. I love that, man. And I see, are you doing heavy haul work or what? Yeah, yeah. So my buddy, what? my buddy Gary Jones kind of got me into, uh, I was gonna so, ask yeah, you. so we kind of got, he kind of pushed me onto some things. I don't want to say push. Um, he asked me to, uh, kind of help out for one of his customers or whatever. And that kind of started a great relationship. Gary's a wonderful man. And, uh, through that, I've built some other relationship with some new, uh, different companies right now. And I've kind of been doing some different things, a little out of the norm, you know, and so you're the fun. perfect person to ask this, uh, in the heavy haul game, right? Yeah. Uh, what's some quick tips that you say, man, I wish I would have known this. Yeah, so the biggest thing I would say with it is, is you know, you uh, getting into it and me being so new to it and everything myself, 
Um, the biggest thing you need to understand is if you do decide it's something you want to do and you want to get into, you literally need to be ready for anything to happen. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's one thing to be bumping docks or hauling steel or whatever, but man, when you're hauling this equipment and that kind of stuff, you yeah. truly have to be ready for all different variations of everything. And not only that, you never know what you're going to be hauling. You know, you may go from hauling a rubber belt to a big giant piece of machinery. You know, you just kind of got to be prepared for everything. I love it. So, I love it. You know, at the end of this, uh, what would you like to leave people with, brother? Well, the biggest thing I would like to leave people with is if you're uh, out there and you want to be in the trucking industry, or if you are in the trucking industry, truly just have a love for it. You know, we're all in it for the same reasons, just like you are. You know, for the most part, lean on the good people in this business because they'll take good care of you. Woo! So. <laughs> I'll tell you, man, we don't even practice this, man. That's right, brother. Hey, I love you so much, love man. Love you too, man. Man, uh, Mother Truckers, when I say... Um, there aren't that many people to really uh, pass the torch to because a lot of people think that old school trucking, what trucking used to be, has gone and passed. With guys like this around, I, I think we're going to be okay. We're so, going to be fine. Hey, I appreciate you so much for everything you do in appreciate Moving America, you. man, and doing what you do, man. I see you. I don't always comment, <laughs> but I see you. I know you do. I know you do. So, I know you're out I wanna, there I want to give you your roses early, brother. Same with you, brother. I don't always comment either, but I know. I'm there for you, and I know you're there for me, and that's all that matters. Hey. So, that's right, brother. <laughs> yes, sir.